there. Welcome to Senior High School uh, here on Joy Learning Channel. It is our revision show, and I'm excited to have you all in your seat. If you are not in your seat, go and sit down, pick your phone, call a friend, call somebody to come around and learn and revise with us, okay? At a senior high school R, right? Good job. And so what are we doing today? Based on the popular requests, you sent in your request that we review the poems as part of our revision. And so we are looking at three of the African selected poems, okay? Three of the African selected poems. So we are going to look at The Grief Land by Agotino Neto. We will also look at The Song of the Women of My Land by Omar Farouk Sese. And then The Black Woman by Leopold Seda Senghor. So these are the poems that we are going to review today, revise today, okay? And then after our revision, what do we expect to achieve? We should be able to identify the mood, the tone, and some poetic devices used in any of the poems. We should also be able to outline the structure. And so in your final exams, when you meet a question like outline or discuss the structure of the poem, how do you go about it? You should be able to do that. And then we will also discuss the attitude of the persona in the poem. So I've mentioned the poems that we are looking at already. We shall be able to discuss the attitude of the persona. If you remember what a persona is, we learned that persona is the voice, the one speaking in the poem. And so these are our objectives for today's revision. So if you're excited as I am, then shake yourself a little, a little, a little. Good job. So let's kick straight and start revising the poems. So we are starting with the song of the women of my land by Omar Farouk Sissi. Pay close attention because after this revision, we are going to pick a question, we will analyze it so that when you meet any question on these poems, you will be able to answer with ease. With what? With ease. And so let's go. Like a sculptor chirping away at bits of wood, time chisels away bits of their memory. It strips away lyrics of the song of the women of my land, leaving only a fading tune echoing the song. They sang in the fallen fields about their life, songs, of how they plow the terrain of their mindscape for memories of lyrics lost in the vast void of time. In those days, when a song beheld their lives, when servitude carved the ankles of their soul, and dereliction decapitated the epic of their lives, with a song, they sponged of their anguish to behold their collective pain, to celebrate their gains, give lyrics to the tune of their life, cheat the tyranny of time, and commune with the yet unborn, to give meaning to an epoch lost in antiquity. Yet time strips the lyrics and scars the tune, leaving a dying song. Dead, like the women who died long ago, living the song to tell the story of their lives. Today, the tune roams the fallen fields, like their souls looking for lyrics to tell the tale of the servitude of the women of my land, who plowed their soul and soul for a song to sing the story of their lives. The song of the women of my land left in the memory of the wind. 
Now feeding the verses of poise, it echoes in fields, wriggling in rhythms and melodies, hollowing in distant tunes, in places far afield from the fallen fields where the song of their lives died. The stuttering lips of my pen and the screeching voice of my nip tried to sing the song of the women of my land in verses far from the theater of soil of toil where they left a song that now roams the land stripped of lyrics like a scorned ghost the tune turning the tenor of my verse is all that remains of the song of the women of my land who labored and died living a dying song the dirge of their lives And so we are done looking at the poem. So this was a quick revision of the poem. And we are, as I stated in the objective, we are going to, we are going to appreciate the poem. Okay? Don't forget our objectives for today. We are going to appreciate the poems. Now we are done with the first poem. Okay? Let's quickly look at these elements and then we will try and answer a question on it so let's look at the aspect of poetry that has been exhibited in the poem that we just looked at what is the form of the poem and so you can have a question like comment on the form and the rhythm in the poem the song of the women of my land. Comment on the form. What will you say about it when you are asked to comment on the form? And so the form of this poem is that it's a lyrical poem. What did I say? It's a lyrical poem. Based on the reading, based on how the words, you know, dance rhythmically you can say that this is a lyrical poem the song of the women of my land and how the words were all moving okay so this is a lyrical poem now rhythm the poem is a free verse does it follow any rhythmic passing do we have any um words that are rhyming there is no rhythm because the end rhymes are not the same. And so we say that this poem is a free verse. And what do we mean when we say a poem is a free verse? It doesn't follow any rhythmic pattern. One next thing we are going to look at is the point of view. Now, if you look at the poem in totality, the song of the women of my land, what is the point of view? Let's quickly go back to the poem, and then we'll look at the point of view. Like a sculptor chirping away at bits of wood. Don't forget, we are looking at the point of view now. We are going to comment on the point of view. Time chisels away. Time chisels away bits of their memory. It strips away lyrics of the song of the women of my land. Living only a fading tune echoing the song. They sang in the fallen fields about their life songs of how they plow the terrain of their mindscape for memories of lyrics lost in the vast void of time in those days when a song beheld their life when servitude carved the ankles of their soul and the religion decapitated the epic of their life with a song they sponged of their anguish to behold their collective pain, to celebrate their gains, their gains, give lyrics to the tune of their life, treat the tyranny of time, 
and commune with the yet unborn. To give meaning to an epoch lost in antiquity. Yet time strips the lyrics and scars the time, leaving a dying song dead. Like the women who died long ago, leaving the song to tell the story of their life. Today, the tune roams the fallen fields, like their souls looking for lyrics to tell the tale of the servitude of the women, my land, who plowed their soil and soul for a song to sing the story of their life. The song of the women of my land, left in the memory of the wind. Now feeding the verses of poets, it echoes in fields, wriggling in rhythms and melodies, hollowing in distant tunes, in places far afield from the fallen fields, where the song of their life died. The stuttering lips of my pen. Don't forget, if you just joined us, welcome to Joy Learning Channel. Today we are having a revision of some of the African poems, selected African poems, okay? And we are currently looking at the song of the women of my land. We've gone through the first phase of the poems and we are going through again to identify the point of view. Don't forget, point of view is the perspective or the angle from which a story or a literary tale is told. And so the perspective can be first person, second person, or third person. And so we are quickly going through to see whether this poem, the point of view, is a first person narrative, a second person narrative, or a third person narrative. Let's go on. The stuttering lips of my pen and the screeching voice of my nip try to sing the song of the women of my land in verses far from the theater of toil where they left a song that now roams the land stripped of lyrics like a scorned ghost the tune turning the tenor of my verse in all that remains of the song of the women of my land who labored and died living a dying song, the dirge of their lives. And so we started looking at the aspects of poetry that have been, you know, displayed in the poem, so that when we come across any question, we'll be able to answer. We've looked at the form. So comment on the form. You should be able to do that. We've looked at the rhythm. Does it rhyme? Is there any rhythmic pattern? It's a free verse. Of course, there are some lines that there are some kind of rhythm, but it's lyrical. So there is no rhyme scheme. And the point of view, I explained what a point of view is. And I said, point of view is the perspective or the angle from which a story or a narrative work is told. Here it is poetry. And so from which point of view is this poem being told? When you read the persona, is it somebody telling, you know, just I using I, I, I throughout the poem? Or making reference to someone else? Using he, she, they? Then we get a third person there. Where you are seeing I, I, I in the poem, then it is first person. Okay, I, mine. So let's quickly put something together. I was cold in the morning because the weather was cold. I felt I was going to shiver, but there was no quiver. I felt my body was going to melt, but it didn't because there was heat. The heat came in and warmed me when I was cold. My body couldn't stand it. And so you see, I just made use of I, I, and there was my in there. And so when you see a poem in that way, then it is what? First person narrative. Good. 
Now this one, if you really pay close attention to the reading, then you will see that the point of view is shift from third person to first person. And so when you are asked to comment on the point of view of this poem, you should be able to cite examples. And so don't just write the poem shifts from first or third person, shifts from third person to first person. You should be able to cite examples. So you can come here. Here, the persona says what? Like a sculptor chopping away at bits of wood, time chips all away bits of their memory. It strips away lyrics of the songs of the women of my land. Living, did you see that? Women of. Women of. So the mind here, can you see the mind? The mind here signifies the first person. Then we go on. And then day. The day also draws our attention to what? Third person. Talking about some people else and not the persona. Mm -hmm. Him or herself in the poem and not the persona. And so they sang. This time we are talking about someone else and not the persona. About their lives. And so you see there. So the use of day, the use of dear in there. Can you see the dia as well? Of how they, so the, the day here also signifies how the poem um, seems to appear in the third person. They plow the terrain of their mind, mindscape. And so when you're asked to comment on the point of view of this poem, you should cite examples. Okay, don't forget to first talk about the persona, the poet. Who wrote this poem? You don't waste time on the one who wrote this poem, right? But just give us a little idea of the one who wrote the poem. Omar Farouk Hussein. He wrote the poem, mm -hmm, The Song of the Women of My Land. In which context did he write the poem? At what time? What was happening? What informed him, his choice of words? And why did he put these words together? You have to bring all into perspective bring all into view, and then you can comment on it. So now we are commenting on the point of view. And we have seen that the point of view is the perspective or the angle from which a story is told, or a literary work is presented. And in this poem, we have seen that right from the beginning, we are seeing dia, we are seeing day, we are seeing the repetition of day, dear, in the lines, and that signifies third person, talking about somebody else, okay? All right, let's go on. For memories of lyrics lost in the vast void of time, okay, there is none here, okay? Dear, okay, when servitude curves the ankles, chop the ankles of their soul, so that they are here again, signifies the third person. You should be able to quote the line, or some of the words. That points to the fact that the poem appears first in the third person. And the religion decapitated the epic of their lives. And so here you also see that the, po the poem just makes, or the persona makes reference just to the people, other than him or herself. With a song, they sponged of their anguish. And so, can you see this line too? They sponged of their anguish, also third person. To behold their collective pain. And so, the third person seemed to appear in, in this poem to celebrate their gains. So, the dear here again, the dear there, they all signifies the third person. Okay, let's see, good. Give lyrics to the tune of their lives. <laughs> Cheat the tyranny of time. Okay, there is none here. Good. Yet time strips the lyrics and scares the tune. Leaving a dying song. Okay, like the women who died long ago. Okay, good. Uh huh. Leaving the song to tell the story of their lives. Can you see that?
Can you see that? All right. Oh, they are light. Today, the team roams the fallen field, okay? Like they are souls looking for legs. So, like they are souls looking for legs. To tell the tale of the servitude, okay? For a song to sing the story of their life. When you want to comment on the use um, of third person point of view, you have to cite examples. We are preparing ourselves for the final exam. And so when you are asked to comment on the point of view, first give a background to the points. Quick, 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 quick. Background to the poem. Talk about the poet. Then you come and introduce what is this poem about. You give us a little knowledge about what the poem is about, then you cite examples from the poem to support your perspective, whether it's first person, second person, or third person. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Good. The last line here also um, puts across the fact that all this side is in the third person where the song of their life died. Can you see that? Now look here. Look at this extract or this um, verse in the poem. And then identify all the words in this verse that also signifies that the poem is in the third verse. It's a few minutes for you to do that. Good, 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 good. I know you've done that. So write it down. When it's time for call in, call in and share your thoughts with us. Okay? Good. Now, I said that the point of view shifts from third person to first, per first person. At what point did it shift? Because throughout, you were seeing dear, day. Dear, day, did you see any eye? Did you see any mind? Let's look at the last part of the poem. The stuttering lips of my pen and the screeching voice of my nips try to sing the song of the women of my land in verses far from the theater of toil where they left a song that now roams the land stripped of lyrics like a scorn ghost, the tune turning the tenor of my verse is all that remains of the song of the women of my land who labored and died living a dying song, the dirge of their life. And so the poem starts in the third person but ends in the first person. At the beginning, the persona seemed... Um, to be talking about some people, okay, some people somewhere. But out of nowhere, you find the persona inside the poem now referring to him or herself. The stuttering lips of my pen and the screeching voice of my nip. So there is my, 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 my in there. Good job. Now, the persona recounts the stories of the women as told in their songs. Let's look at the tone and mood. Mm -hmm. The tone and mood. Now, the tone of the poem shifts from lamentations to consolation, then to bitterness to optimism. I don't know what you identified when you were reading along with me. Did you see anything like this? And so you can also have a question. Comment on the theme theme of lamentation, lamentation to consolation, or bitterness to optimism in the poem, The Song of the Women of My Land. How will you go about this question? Comment on the, lamenta the theme, lamentation to consolation, bitterness to optimism. When you are asked to comment on a theme, you are to analyze the theme as presented in the poem. 
And so give your, your perspective, your understanding of the poem. Now pick the themes as presented, as you've identified or as they've given you. And this time, look for examples in the poem to support it. The examples that you identify to support it will help your answer, will help give your answer some kind of weight that will give you the mark that you deserve, okay? Don't forget that. Now, um, rhyme scheme. There is no rhyme scheme. I'm sure you remember when we learned about identifying the rhyme scheme of a poem. This poem has got no rhyme scheme. And so in your analysis, you can say that it is a blank verb. Okay? It is what? A blank verb. Now, enjambment. What is enjambment? Do you remember enjambment? Don't worry if you don't remember. We are revising, right? Good. And so enjambment is when the words run on. Hmm? When the words run on. And so let's see some enjambment. Let's look at line... And one, two, no, let's look at the last part. So line 37 to, to 45. Okay. Good. So, the stuttering lips of my turn and the screeching voice of my nip try to sing the song of the women of my land in verses far from the theater of toil where they left a song that now roams the land stripped of lyrics like a scone goat. So the lines are just on. They all present ideas and they end there and they continue. When you put it together, you get a complete idea. But the ideas are not falling. They are together. Okay? Good. All right. And so a quick exercise, and then we will go on. Okay. So pick your books and write. Okay, so comment on the theme of bitterness in the poem, The Song of the Women of My Land. When you come across a question like this, how do you go about it? When I was going through previously, I gave you a scenario and how we should start. And so with this question, how will you also answer it? Try your hands on it and share your answer with us later as we go on with our revision. Good? Good. So try our hands on it. We will come back. The next poem we are revising today is The Griveland. The Griveland by Agotino Neto. Agotino Neto. The Grievelands of Africa in the tearful wars of ancient and modern slave, in the degrading sweats of impure dance of other seas. Grieved. The grieved lands of Africa, in the infamous sensation of the stunning perfume of the flower, crashed in the forest by the wickedness of iron and fire. The grieved lands. The grieve lands of Africa, in the dream soon and done in jinglings of goldless key, and in the stifled laughter and victorious voice of lament, and in the unconscious brilliance of hidden sensation, 
of the Griveland of Africa. Alive, in themselves and with us alive. They bubble up in dreams, decked with dances by baobab over balances by the antelope. In the perpetual alliance of everything that lives, they shout out the sound of life, shouted, even the cups thrown up by the Atlantic in putrid offering of incoherence and death and in the clearness of rivers, they live. The grieved land of Africa, in the harmonious sound of conscience, contained in the honest blood of men, in the strong desires of men, in the sincerity, in the pure and simple rightness of the stars, persistence. They live the grieved lands of Africa because we are living and are imperishable particles of the grieved land of Africa. Now, we have also gone through this poem. We are going to go back to the first one. Okay, I gave you some assignments. Let's see how you fared. And then we will identify the literary devices. And then we will identify some poetic styles. Then we will come here to also do theme. Right? Good. I asked you to comment on the theme. Were you able to do that? Good job. Now let's identify some literary devices. So if you are asked to identify some literary devices or they give you an excerpt, a portion of the poem, for you to give a theme or an idea in that poem and identify some literary devices as well, how do you go about it? The first poem we looked at has got a lot of po uh, literary devices, a lot of literary examples mm -hmm, in there. And so let's see. All right. Good, 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 good. Look at this and identify some devices and let's go. Mm-hmm. Like a sculptor chirping at bits of wood, time chisels away bits of memory. So what do we get here? Like a sculptor chirping away at bits of wood, time chisels away bits of their memory. And so we are comparing what? The chirping away of the sculpture mm -hmm, at bits of wood to that of time chiseling away bits of memory. And so, comparing to the similar ideas, we get what simile. And so, you can be also be asked to look at the literary devices present in the poem. We have seen simile. Let's look at this one. It strips away lyrics of the song of the women of my land, leaving only a fading tune echoing the song, okay? They sang in the fallen fields, okay, so fallen fields, mm? fallen fields, what device is there? The repetition of the theme, consonant sounds, so we get alliteration. Of how they plow the terrain of their mindscape. From memories of lyrics lost in the vast void of time, so, so much alliteration. 
no one that we get to understand that this poem is a lyrical poem. So there is alliteration here, and there is also another alliteration. Don't forget. So we have seen alliteration, alliteration. I hope you can see that, good. Now let's come here. When servitude child cuffed the ankles of their soul and the election decapitated the ethic of their life. So you can see another. So the, the rhythm is, is there, the lyrics is just flowing. You get another alliteration. Okay, it's your turn now. Look at this and identify some literary devices used in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With a song, they sponged off their anguish. How can you sponge off your anguish with a sponge? What device is that? Identify it and share with us. So behold their collective pain, celebrate their gains, okay? So this is the only part that rhymes. And because it's just this pain and gain, you cannot um, conclude that the poem has got a rhyme scheme, okay? All right. Can you see another device here? Go through and let's see. Yet time strips the lyrics and scares the tune. How can time strip lyrics and scare tune? What device is that? What device is that? Okay, so we have personification. Time strip the lyrics and scars the tune. So personification is giving human attributes to non-human entities. Okay, good. Living a dying song, dead. Living a dying song. How can a song die? And so another personification here. Like the women who died long ago, living the song to tell the story of their life. Okay. Let's look here too and see if we can identify any device. Don't forget, we are doing the revision together. It is not only Auntie Jima who is doing it. Today the tune roams the fallen fields. How can a tune roam? Mm? And so we have two devices here. One device there. Another device, yes. Today, the tune rooms. What device is that? So, personification. Fallen fields, you get alliteration. Repetition of the same consonant sounds. Like they are souls looking for lyrics to tell the tale, another t, 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 t. Repetition of the same consonant sounds to give you alliteration of the women, my land, who plow their soil and sow. How can you plow soil and sow? There is also another device there. Okay. How is it going? Is it working? You called for this revision, and so we responded to it. You said, let's go to the African poems, as we did to the non-African poems. And so we started with this one. We've looked at the theme, the possible theme that we can identify. We've looked at some literary devices, and that's what we are looking at. We've looked at the tone in this poem. We've looked at the point of view, from which angle 
the, the persona or the poet writes the poem. We've looked at that as well. For a song to sing the story of their life. The song of the women of my land, left in the memory of the wind. So what device is this? Left in the memory of the wind. What device is that? Okay. So that is also left for you to do it. Look here quickly. And then we have to move to the other one, okay? Mm -hmm. Look at this. Now, feeding the verses of poets. Did you identify that? What device is present there? It echoes in fields, wriggling in rhythms and melodies, hollering in the stanchions, in places far afield from the fallen fields, where the song of their life died. Hmm. Songs of life died. Another device in them. What device is that? All right. Okay. Good. Look at the last part, and then we are out of this poem. Mm-hmm. Stuttering lips of my pen. This is the pen. Does the pen have a lip? And so there is a device there. What device is that? It's for you to do it. Okay? We are writing together. And so, based on all the examples that we've cited, you should be able to identify this as well. And the screeching voice of my nip. The voice of screeching like a call. Mm. Try to sing the song of the women of my land. In verses far from the theater of toil. Theater of toil. There is a particular kind of device. So you can also be asked to comment on the dominance device in the poem. So comment on the dominance device used in the poem and its effect. How um, has that other devices used? How is it affecting the poem? Or how has it affected the poem? How has it affected understanding? Has it affected how the message has been put across? Does it affect it? If it does, you should be able to comment on it. So comment on the use of um, personification and alliteration in the poem. Comment on their use. Okay? You should be able to do that. Okay. Where they left a song that now roams at the land, stripped of lyrics like a scorn ghost. Mm -mm. So a lot of personification and alliteration used in this poem. And so I'm going to add another question for you to try your hands on. Comment. on the use of alliteration so comment on the use of alliteration and personification in the poem to achieve the effect of the song sung by the women Hello. Hi. Okay.
comments on the use of alliteration and personification in the poem to achieve the effect of the song sung by the women. And so you this is your assignment. You have to do it as we move on to the next, okay? Good, 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 good. So the next poem we are reviewing or revising today is The Graveland. Now you're going to share with me your idea about The Graveland. So read along. I've gone through alone. Now it's your turn to go through. Do that. Good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the last part we read together. The Greek land of Africa in the harmonious sound of consciences contained in the honest blood of men, in the strong desire of men, in the sincerity, in the pure and simple rightness of the stars, existence they live. The grief lands of Africa, because we are living and are imperishable particles of the grief land of Africa. Now, if you look at this poem, by who? Come and look at this again. And don't say you are not thus. So the grief land was written by Agotinho Neto, okay? And this is one of the selected African poems that we are to look at for the final exam. Now, um, this poem actually belongs to the group of poems which advance the unique beauty of the black race. And so if you were really paying attention when I asked you to read, you realize that um, there was some kind of um, longing, okay, longingness in the poem. And so we say that this kind of poems belong to the black race and the dominant strength of being black. Right. Now, the poet draws from the realistic nature of negritude. And you know that when we talk about negritude, it's a movement which celebrates and promotes the uniqueness and dominance of black race to other races, popularly propagated by Leopold Seda Senghor. Hmm? Now, what is the theme? The rhythm of the poem, the point of view. Did you see any rhythm? And it's also a free verse. And so this poem is also a free verse. And then the point of view. Now, the persona presents the uniqueness of black race and their resistance to the slavery and colonial rule. Right. Now, the grief lands, the poet presents African race as an imperishable race, an African land, as a land that can withstand anything. And so if you pay close attention to the poem, then you realize that, okay, so um, a netto, netto just like Leopold, okay? You know Leopold, um, his poems, um, most of the time talks about the black race. And so we see that the poet, the poet who, who is Neto, draws from the realistic nature of negritude. And we know what the negritude movement is. And these, one, these kind of poems are, were usually propagated by Leopold Sedasenko. And so Leopold is the one you mostly see writing about the black race, um, you know, trying to curb the black 
nature in a beautiful way. And that's exactly what Neto also tried to do. Now, what is the tone and mood of this poem? So the first three stanzas, if you pay close attention, then you see that the first three stanzas talk about the degradation of Africa. Let's quickly go back there and then look at it by slavery, imperialism, colonialism, and westernization. And so these um, words here have a link with social studies. And so if you are studying your social studies well, if you are studying your social studies well, then you will understand all these things that have been outlined here. And so the first three stanzas talk about the degradation nature of Africa, how some people perceive the Africans to be, okay? And so Neto um, pointed that out in his poem, and you can find that in the first three stanzas. So let's see. The grieved lands of Africa. And so the lands of Africa, we, we are really grieving. In the tearful woes of ancient and modern slaves. In the degrading sweat of impure dance of other seas grieved. The grieved lands of Africa. In the infamous sensation of the stunning perfume of the flower. Mm. Crushed in the forest, can you see that? By the wickedness of iron and fire, the grieved lands, the grieved lands of Africa, in the dream soon undone in jinglings of gaoler keys, and in the stifled laughter and victorious voice of lament, and in the unconscious brilliance of hidden sensation of the grieved lands of Africa. And so if you look at um, the, the lines or the stanzas that we've looked at right now, it points to what um, Neto wants to put across, his mood, okay? His mood talks about degradation, how people have looked down on Africa and why and how Africa, Africa is sad, okay? the sad nature that Africa finds itself. Now, the poet uses these stanzas to decry the effect of Western influence on Africa. And who is to be blamed, of course? When we want to talk about the Western influence, as Neto has captured in his poem, the poem cries out, points out, you know, how people are not excited about what they see. Now we don't eat our own food. We, we prefer to put on their clothing. But times are changing. And so I'm sure there'll be another poem very soon to counter what Neto was putting across because people are now embracing their Africanity in them. Now, if you look at line two of the poem, um, in the tearful woes of ancient modern slaves, in this line, and the Asians refers to the physical slavery when men and women were forcefully moved out of the land of Africa, okay, to different parts of the world. And that's what has been captured. But now we are here, but we want to go to the different parts of the world. And so the slavery is actually back in a different way. In those days, we have to be forced to go there, but now we are not forced but we still want to go and suffer in the cold. Now, the modern slave refers to the present psychological and mental slavery in Africa and among blacks. And so um, some blacks feel that their skin color is not beautiful, and so they would rather go to inject, they would rather go to buy pomade, expensive pomade, just to change their color just to get uh, the color of the white. It's part of the mental slavery that Neto was talking about, where Africans or blacks depend on the West for aid and solution. And Neto's poem actually points to the fact that the slavery is still there because we still go to them for, for, for support. We are still not able to manage our resources well. And because of that, we will go there for support. So if you have a question um, 
of this nature to comment on the mood of the persona. When you are commenting on the mood of the persona, you can cite examples as cited here. So all the illustrations that have been given here, you can make reference to them. So you can talk about um, Neto, you can talk about his, um, his race, you can talk about where he gets his inspiration. Um, you can talk about the fact that his poem um, have a link with the with nature of negritude. You can talk about the fact that his poem um, also points or have a relation with Leopold Sedasenko. And then you can cite the examples that have been cited here right now. So you can say that the first three stanzas of the poem talk about the degradation of Africa. If you, as you quote from the poem, you can quote from practical everyday experiences. And as you cite practical everyday experiences, you make your essay more richer. You can also um, look at the line to going down. Now, I want to give you some few uh, minutes. Write this question down and try your hands on it. And come and compare, and let's see how we go. Comment on the mood of the poet, OK? Comment on the mood of the poet. Mm -hmm. Comment on the mood of the poet. So we will come back. We want to go for a quick commercial break as you try your hands on this poem, OK? This question that has been given. See you shortly. Did you know? that examination more practice can lead to poor grades. As a result of this, you will lose trust in yourself and will not be able to perform well in any future assignments and tests. So, I'm here to give you simple tips on how to avoid examination more practice. So let's talk about the do's in examination hall. One, bring everything you need into the examination hall. It may sound simple, but a lot of stress can be avoided by making sure you have everything you need to do in the exam. Make a checklist the night before each exam, then go through it before you leave home, and then again before entering the examination hall. Two, read the whole paper before writing anything. One of the most important exam preparation tips to dwell in during the run-up to exams. Read every question before you start writing anything. Don't get stuck in straight away. Read a paper from the start to finish at least once before you begin writing. Three, do the easiest question first. There is no reason to do the question in order they are printed in the exam. Firstly, getting the first question done well will help you calm you and get you focused for the rest of the exam. Secondly, often you will get an easy question done quicker so you will be ahead of schedule from the start. Four, revise, revise, and revise again. The night before the exams is not the time to be trying to get your head around new concepts. Some students read and forget part of the information during exam. This is why you have to keep revising till the day or morning of the exams. This is one of the steady habits of highly successful students. Once you have become so conversant with your revisions, Little or a slight pause will only be required for you to recollect the appropriate information. 5. Ask the invigilator questions. If you are stuck on the meaning of a word or can't understand what a question requires you to do, put your hand up and ask the invigilator who is supervising the exams. More often than not, they will help you or point to you in the right direction. 6. Look at the marking scheme. Keep an eye out for the marking scheme that shows how many marks have been awarded for each part of a question. If there are only small amounts of marks going for a part of a question, refrain from giving it the majority of your time. Instead, 
answer questions with higher marks. Seven, cross-check answers. You must check all answers before submitting your answer sheet to the invigilator. You should keep the last 15 minutes before the final bell to cross-check your answers. A thorough revision of every answer is necessary as it will help you to identify the errors and make the necessary corrections. Eight, think about the consequences of malpractice. Ever heard the saying, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom? Always remember, there is punishment for people who are caught cheating. There you have it. Believe in yourself, prepare well, and you will come out with flying colors. My name is Tina, and I am your examination coach. Keep watching Joy Learning and follow us on all our social media platforms. So I come your way again, shine on. Joy Learning, keep learning. Welcome back. And so before we went on break, I asked you to comment on the mood of the poet in the poem, Griveland. Mm -hmm. How did it go? Were you able to comment on the mood? If you were able to do that, then let's go back quickly and look at my comments on the mood. Okay. So, let's look at how, mm -hmm. so I said, the first three stanzas talk about the degradation of Africa by slavery. Give a quick background about the poet, a quick background about what generally inspires him to write the kind of poems that he writes okay and um, look at the poem in totality once you are done you'll be able to get a good understanding don't forget you don't read only once if you read just once you'll not understand the question well and so read it read it at least three times and you get a good understanding of it now don't forget to also cite examples from the poem you don't write raw essay and expect to get your marks. That is why most of the times in literature we don't do well. We don't do well because we don't cite. Whatever line you write, make sure you have support and the support should come from the text, okay? Once you have your support from the text, you are good to go. And so here in commenting about the mood, I said that um, line two, in the tearful woes of ancient and modern slave. Now, in this line, the ancient refers to the physical slavery. And I made reference to the fact that um, people want to change their skin, people want to change the way they look because they want to look like people from other parts of the world or other part of Africa. And it's all part of the slavery. We also looked at the fact that um, so here, the modern slave refers to the present psychological and mental slavery. People still think about how to make it out there and not how to make it here. Now in Africa and among blacks, where Africans or blacks depend on the West for aid and solution. This is real. It, it's not far from us. And even in our country, you can get examples to support or to buttress your point. Now, um, so you see the psychological acceptance of Western values, culture, dressing, lifestyle, etc., as the standard of measuring success and achievement. And so in, the, in commenting about the mood, you can make reference to all these things and cite examples to support your point. Now, does the poem have any rhyme scheme? We just read the poem together. There is no rhyme scheme, and so we can say that 
the poem is written in blank verse, okay? It's written in blank verse. Okay. Let me give you another assignment here. So you try your hands on it, even as we look at the last um, poem for today. Okay. So this card. Okay, so discuss the theme of slavery in the poem, Graved Land, discuss, discuss. In discussing, you have to make sure you write at least 250 or 300 words. At least, so that is the least, so at least 300 words. Don't write half paragraph and think that you are done discussing. That will not help you, okay? Good job. Now let's look at the last one for today. And that is Leopold Sedar Senghal, the black woman. The black woman. Don't worry, the black woman is one of my favorite poems. Okay. Naked woman, black woman, clothed with your color, which is life, with your form, which is beauty. In your shadow I have grown up. The gentleness of your hands was laid over my eyes. And now, high up on the sun, baked pods, at the heart of summer, at the heart of noon, I came upon you, my promised land. And your beauty strikes me to the heart like the flash of an eagle. Naked woman, Dark woman, fan fleshed ripe fruits, somber raptures of black wine, mouth making lyrical my mouth, savannah stretching to clear horizons, savannah, shuddering beneath the east winds, eagle caresses, carved tom tom, towel tom tom, muttering under the conqueror's fingers. Your solemn contralto voice is a spiritual song of the beloved. Naked woman, black woman, oil that no breath ruffles, calm on the atlas, flanks on the flanks of the princess of Mali, gazelle, limbed in paradise, pearls are stars on the right of your skin. Delight of the mind, the glinting of red gold against your watered skin. Under the shadow of your hair, my care is lighted by the neighboring suns of your eyes. Naked woman, black woman, I sing your beauty that passes, the form that I fix in the eternal, before jealous fate turn you to ashes to feed the roots of life. Yes, we are done with the poems. I didn't write anything. We are all going to discuss. We are all going to analyze this poem together. Okay? So we are going to for the last, and then we will identify the mood, the tone, mm -hmm, the structure, Are we here? Good. So let's do that. Let's quickly go back to the poem and then we will identify the things that I just mentioned. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so read it. Let's quickly do that. Read it, read it, read it. Are you reading? Okay. Mm-hmm.
Okay. We are reading the last part together. Your solemn concerto voice is the spiritual song of the beloved, naked woman, black woman, oil that no breath ruffles, calm on the athletes, flanks on the flanks of the princess of Mali, gazelle lamb in paradise, pales the stars on the right of your skin, delight of the mind, the glinting of red gold against your watered skin. Under the shadow of your hair, my care is lighted by the neighboring suns of your eyes. Naked woman, black woman, I sing your beauty that passes, the form that I fixed in the eternal before jealous fate turn you to ashes to feed the root of life. Now, before we look at the mood, the tone, and the structure, what is the poem about? So don't go too far. If today is the first time that you have joined us in your learning, this is one of the selected, non -Af selected African poems. This one is by Leopold Tudor Single, and the title is Black Woman. Now the black woman is not the black woman you were thinking about. The naked woman is not a naked woman. It's not the literal woman who is naked. Is about a particular woman. What woman is that? What woman is that? And so learners who are watching, I want you to tell us what woman is that? Whoever is listening should know that my learners understand the poem and they know what the poem is about. And so we will come to that question. Who is the woman? Who is the woman, the poet, is talking about? Who is the woman the poet is talking about? You let us know later. For now, let's look at the mood of the poet. What's the mood of the poet? We've looked at mood already. So if you look at this poem, what is the mood? Mm -hmm. What do you want to share with us? What is the mood of this poem? What's the mood? Okay, so you can talk about longing. Longing for what? Longing for love. And this love is not the love you are also thinking about. What is the tune? So the tune is... Um, So we looked at previous ones and we saw that the tone was harsh, the tone was that of sadness. But here, what is the tone? Naked woman, black woman, clothed with your color, which is life, with your form, which is beauty. In your shadow I have grown up, the gentleness of your hands was laid over my eyes. And now, high up on the sun, baked past, at the heart of summer, at the heart of noon, I came upon you my promised land. And your beauty strikes me to the heart like the flash of an eagle. Naked woman, dark woman, firm flesh, ripe fruit, somber raptures of black wine, mouth making lyrical my mouth. Mm -hmm. Savannah stretching to clear horizons. Savannah shuddering beneath the east wind's eager caresses. Curved tum tum, south tum tum, marching under the conqueror's finger. And so the tone of this um, poem is what? Hmm, calm, 
So you get the mood. The mood is longing for love. The love of what? And then the tone is calm. You know, the way the lines have been arranged. There is no anger. There is no anger in there. Um, I didn't see any anger. I don't know whether you realized anything like that. Now let's look at the structure of the poem. Okay? So if you are asked to comment on the structure of the poem, how are you going to go about it? I want you to quickly try your hands on it. As I try to explain the first... Um, the mood of the poem. So longing for love. Now, if you look at this poem, who is the woman in the poem? In the, who is the woman the poet is talking about? Share with us. Who is the woman? Who is the woman? Let me open our phone line. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a very big bird. It's two on one. So there's no five. So there's a it's a very big bird. It's two on one. So there's a so there's a two. Okay. So I want you to call in and share with us. Afterwards, I will also continue and explain. So you can call us on zero two zero three zero two. 211-705-0302-211-705 or you can call 0302-211-706 okay call in and share with us longing for love what love is that I want to know my learners and then who is the woman the poet is talking about You can call in to share your ideas on 0302-211-705 or 0302-211-706. Okay. As we, as we wait for your call, let's look. Let me try and explain, and then I'll get your call too. So... The mood of the poem, the persona in the poem, is longing for love. And what love? The love for the country. The love for Africa. Okay? So it's longing for love. The love for his country, Africa. Now we get the tone. And we say that the tone is calm. Hmm? The tone is calm. Okay. All right. So I have Ima on the line. Hello, Ima. Oh, we missed Emmanuel. You can try again. 0302-211-705. 0302-211-706. I want to know who is the woman the poet is talking about. All right. Now, let's come down to the structure of the poem. All right, Kweku. Hello, Kweku. Hello, madam. Okay, Kweku, share with us. Um, where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, Janta. Janta in the Ashanti region? Yes, please. Beautiful. And you're still awake. That's good, Kweku. Kweku, what class are you? Um, I'm in Form 2. SHS 2? Yes, please. Nice. So you study this poem? Yes, please. Give me your perspective. I want to hear what you think about the poem. Okay. You asked a question and I think uh, the poem is talking about Africa. Okay. Okay, so you know. <laughs> 
who is the woman the voice is talking about the woman is africa okay now Kweku, generally what do you think about the poem okay um the poem i think it is raising the good things africa has okay 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 the good things Africa possess. Yes. All right. Any other? Okay. Um, I think it is also trying to project Africa above all. Hmm. Projecting Africa above all. Wow. Kweku, this is good. Thank you very much. And I'm excited you stay glue. I'm sure you love literature, eh? Yes, please. Yay. Thank you very much. You're Bye -bye. welcome. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Kweku. You can also call in to share your ideas with us. You can call 030-221-1705. And Kweku just did justice. So if you were thinking so much, the poet, the woman the poet is talking about is Africa. Okay? All right. And the longingness that the poet, um, the, the mood, longing for that love is the love of Africa. Okay. Um, and as we wait for you to also share your ideas with us, let's quickly look at what Kweku just said. So Kweku said... Um, the poet is trying to project the goodness in Africa. And I agree with Kweku. So the poet, all the words that the poet used in this poem is about the good things that Africa possess. So if you look at the previous poems that we've reviewed, if you look at um, Neto's poem, if you look at um, the other poem that we also looked at, it, it doesn't really project Africa in a beautiful way. But Seda Senko said that naked woman, black woman, clothed with your color, which is life. And so if you look at this poem, the naked woman here is, is Africa. And if you look at how he's... Hello, Moses. Hello. Good evening, my darling. I'm excited to have you call. Where are you calling from? Calling from Nairobi. Where? Nairobi. Wow, this is beautiful. Are you a literature student? Yes, please. Okay, what school? <laughs> Actually, I teach literature in You are what? I teach literature in basic school. Oh, okay. So share with me. But you are following the poem. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think about the poem? Uh, everything will comment on the structure of the poem. No. So in the structure of the poem, mm -hmm. it's still like, in the sense that the, the number of lines in each of the stanzas vary. So in that, you see the point of the three words. Okay. Then um, the, the other question is concerning the the tone where you have the the longing for love, so the type of love that the the type of love you just have. I think that love, just as the previous caller said, it is the love of one's nation or one's continent, and in this case, Africa. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Love Africa. Uh, then the woman is also up top. You know, in the name is to refer to a nation or a continent as air. Since it contains human beings to refer to them as mother or mother Africa. And so in that case, we, we, we can then see that Africa or one country can be referred as a woman. Wow. So the name is Africa or someone's nation is the woman we are talking about today. Wow, wow, wow. 
Wow, I have to clap for you. <laughs> well done. Keep learning, okay? And keep watching, try learning. <laughs> yeah, well done. Call back some other time and share your view with us, okay? I'm grateful. I'm, I'm super grateful as well. Uh, All right. See you good then. night. Good night. Thank you. Wow. My students are doing well, and it's beautiful. We have people from Navrongo learning with us here on Joy Learning, from Kumasi, you just had them. This is good. And the most amazing part is that the learner who just called is not in senior high school, is in junior high school, but is a lover of literature and was following closely and has given a beautiful understanding to the poem. This is good. This is very good. All right. So let's go on. So we're trying to look at um, the poem. Line up. Hello. Oh, we lost her. Okay, try calling again. So you can call us on 030. One one seven zero five zero three zero two two one one seven zero five or zero three zero two two one one seven zero six. Call in, share your ideas, and let's revise the lesson together. All right. Okay, so Helen is back. Hello, Helen. Hello, madam. Good evening. Good evening. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Kumasi. Kumasi. Okay, Helen. Are you in senior high school? Yes. Are you a literature student? Yes. Good. So share with us. What do you think? And what school do you attend? I attend a high school. Oh, beautiful. So what do you think about the poem? Have you studied it at school? Yes. Okay, so share your views with us. So I think um, the writer really presents Africa in a symbol of a beautiful black woman. Mm. It emphasizes the fact that Africa without the influence of Europe and has an original or natural beauty. Wow, Helen, this is good. Any other? Um, the, the writer seeks to undermine or show away the notion of high superiority and black superiority. So during the colonization, the Europeans propagated the theory that justified their colonization of the African continent. They claim to have some and um, they claim to have come to accomplish a divine mission to the last time. That is, they felt that it is God who sent them on a mission to civilize Africa. But the writer is telling us that no, Africa has its own natural beauty. Wow. <laughs> My learners are good. So you see, Helen, I'm excited that you call. Um, keep calling, okay? And okay. keep learning. Joy learning. Let's keep learning. Wow. All the way from Kumasi. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. I'm excited. Have a good night. Okay, and so for our last poem, I decided not to analyze it. I decided to share with my learners to discuss and share their views with us. And you can hear all the beautiful things that they are saying about the poem. This means that the children are very good. Give them a little push and you will not regret it. They will amaze you. And um, you can also call in to share your view with us. We are looking at the last poem. Black Woman by Leopold Sedasenko. You can call us on 030-2211-705. 030-2211-705 or 030-2211-706. Call in and share your ideas with us.
Okay. And so, quickly, let's look at some of the issues raised in the poem. All right. So, if you look at this poem, this poem projects Africa. Okay? This poem projects Africa. So, okay, we have another lovely caller on the line. Hello. Oh, we lost her. She's going to call back. Keep calling, try calling. We are right here. Okay, and so we are looking at issues raised in the poem, okay? Some of our callers have already mentioned some of the issues. Um, projecting Africa. In a beautiful way. The love for his roots. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Accra. Okay. Um, what school do you attend? Peggy Senior High. Okay, lovely. Now share with us, what are some of the issues raised in the poem? And all, what do you think about the poem in general? Okay, so the persona shows the natural beauty and elegance of the skin color of Africa. And the persona, the expression paradise, which the persona tries to portray Africa as a place of perfection, humility, and rest. Okay, go on. And the persona describes vegetation around us as cloth and its rich green color as light. Okay. And the color in the form of the evergreen world makes it beauty. Okay. Any other? And the persona uses the east wind to point out the romantic, scenic beauty of the African landscape and with gentle care proves our character. Hmm, any other? Uh, and the gazelle lives in paradise, the expression paradise, which refers to a place of beauty, goodness and rest. Therefore, the persona compares with Africa to paradise. Wow. <laughs> What's the name again? Samuel. Samuel. Samuel, you love literature, eh? Yes, please, a proud one. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I'm excited to know that I have boys who love literature. Keep loving literature and keep studying with us here on Joy Learning, okay, Samuel? Okay, thank you. Okay, so do you follow us on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube? Yes, Watch our yes, videos, please. drop your comments, and share with us what you would love us to teach again okay okay, okay thank, yeah. you, thank you thank, thank you, you thank you thank you thank you oh my learners are good it will amaze you that this session that i decided to leave it out for them they've come up with a lot of wonderful ideas and so let's go on we are looking at the lines used in the poem to project africa Mm -hmm. So I mentioned that unlike the other two poems um, where Africa is being looked on, looked down on, this poem by Leopold Sedatenko is the opposite. Leopold titled The Black Woman. Woman here. You see, when you look at the woman, the woman has got scabs. The woman is beautiful. The man is handsome as well. But the woman is delicate and has got a lot of valuable assets. I'm not saying the men don't have valuable assets. They do too, okay? 
<laughs> okay, now Leopold projects the woman, comparing it to Africa. And so this, um, the title is metaphorical, the black woman. The black woman, if you see the title on the outside, you think it's just a black woman. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, Gideon. Where are you calling from? In town. Where? In town. Gideon. Accra. Accra. Okay, Gideon. Where do you attend school? Okay, we lost Gideon. We lost Gideon. Okay. All right. So let's go on. Now, so we're looking at, you know, the, the, delicate, the delicate nature of women and how beautiful they stand out. And that's exactly what Leopold has done, comparing the black woman to that of Africa, the black woman. Okay. Now, he goes on to say that, in your shadow I have grown up. The gentleness of your hands was laid over my Okay, we have another caller. Hello, Moses. Uh, Where are you calling from? Navrongo. Navrongo again. Nice. Oh, my learners in Navrongo are, are learning. They are watching us. Um, share with us what you've learned. Yeah, I want to analyze the last line of the point. If you can kindly explain it for me. Say that again. The last line of the point. The last line. Yes. It was. I just want to analyze the last line of the poem. Go ahead. Go ahead. So. Yeah, kindly display it for me. I want to see it. I should display it for you. Okay. Uh huh. I've done that. Okay. Before John Pitt turned you ashes to feed the roots of life. I think with this, it is not necessarily talking about uh, a woman dying and turning into anything to see the risk of any other plant. But it is talking about before any other influence from the, from, from the Western countries or any other foreign countries to change the beautiful heritage you have been. The African, the African heritage. So we try to get the best Africa before any in foreign country deteriorate the natural beauty of the African or the African culture. Wow. So that is the observation of me when I try to analyze it and that yeah. This is beautiful. Well done. So before the Western culture consumes the beauty that is hidden in Africa. I love this analysis. I love this. I love this. Well done. Now, there is a device there. Can you identify any literary device over there? Before the send you to Africa. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. What device is present there? For faith to say something to access, faith has been sacrificed. Because faith cannot say anything to access uh, uh, as, as to giving human character. So, so it is metaphorical. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> the the general faith speaking, they are told. Wow. <laughs> I'm amazed. What's the name again? Moses. Moses from Narongo. And so if you are in a car and you're not watching Joy Learning, you they do yourself. Moses, keep telling your friends to watch Joy Learning. I'm excited uh, and we will talk again. Okay.
All right. Have a good night. Good night. Wow. <laughs> so I'm, I'm amazed. I decided that in the revision, I will leave one poem for the students to do it. And you can all get, the, you can hear the calls that are coming in and the feedback the learners are giving. Don't look down on them. They are super, super good. Okay. Um, as we wait for others to call in, let's go on with the last lap and what we're doing. So we're trying to break down the words um, that have been used in this poem by Leopold Tadatengho, okay? And we saw that a naked woman here represents Africa, not just a woman who is naked. Um, and he goes on to say that clothed with your color, which is life, with your form, which is beauty. And if you look at uh, the green vegetation, the resource, the natural resources. Hello. 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 Oh, we lost her. Okay. So if you look at um, the vegetation, the green vegetation, you look at the gold, all the natural resources that Africa possesses. That is what clothes with your color, which is life. All these things represent life. Mm? With your form, which is beauty. In your shadow I have grown up. The gentleness of your hands was laid over my eyes. And so the persona is trying to project what he sees when he thinks about Africa. Africa. He's trying to think about how, uh, how he feels about his country, about his origin, okay, all right. Now he goes on to say that, and now, high up on the sun, big paths, at the heart of summer, at the heart of noon, I came upon you, my promised land. And so that should give you a clue, even if you are not a literature student, I'm sure you got a clue at the point that the black woman is not just a woman who is naked, but Africa, that is put into context. Hello. 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 Good evening. Good evening, Gideon. I'm happy you've called after your line job. Where are you calling from? Accra. Accra. Okay, Gideon. Share with us what you think about the poem, The Black Woman. Uh, I didn't join it. I was asked. Where I'm I'm struggling to hear you if you can be vocal a little more. I said I think you need to blow. You what? I am lost. I just joined the lesson. Oh you are lost. Oh okay, but are you a literature student? No, please. Okay, but you are just enjoying the lesson? Yes, please. Okay, nice, 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 nice. Okay, then I, I'm going to go over right now. Sit glue to your set as I go over, and then you can call back, okay? Okay, please. Perfect. Thank you very much, Gideon. Thank you. All right. All right. So, um, to those who just joined us, you are here on Joy Learning Channel revision show and we are revising three of the selected african poems some of our learners actually called for it and so we answered them and we are reviewing the poems we started reviewing the first poem the song of the women of the land and then we looked at um grieved land so we started with this Quickly, I'm trying to go back there. All right. So we looked at the song of the women of my land by Omar Farouk to say, um, we analyzed it in totality. We even identified some literary devices that have been used in there. And then we tried to comment on the mood as well as the tone. We looked at the structure. We looked at Hello. Hello, 
Cindy. Hello, good evening. Good evening, my darling. I'm excited you've called. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Kumasi. Okay, Cindy. Cindy, are you a literature student? Yes, please. Okay, take us away. Share with us what you've learned this evening. Uh, I've learned a lot, but um, black woman is a good no, uh, poem. So I would like to talk about a theme of beauty. Okay. The theme of beauty depicts uh, African woman like her black eyes, dark skin color, her naked form, and beautiful woman. Wow. The beauty as the beauty depends a uh, 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 metaphorical uh, like a, a metaphor. Yeah. The beauty of the woman is a metaphor yeah. for the positive quality of Africa and her people. Example: Africa is cool and perfect in all its ways. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Clap for yourself. <laughs> okay, Cindy, thank you very much. Always call your friends to also watch Joy Learning, okay? Okay. And I'll take this, this privilege to okay. um, greet my friends who are watching Joy Learning TV. And um, I, I attend uh, a picture like uh, uh. All right. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> Have a good night. Okay. So my learners <laughs> are amazing. So we're doing a quick recap of what we've done today. Um, we started with um, the song of the woman of my land. And then we went on, we looked at the form, the rhythm point of view. We also looked at the tone and mood. We looked at the rhyme scheme, if there was any and there was none. We looked at enjambment, and then we, we commented on the use of alliteration and personification. And then we came to, I think we also did something else. Okay, so I gave you a question. Comment on the theme of bitterness in the poem, The Song of the Women of My Land, okay? And then we came to Grieve Land, we read Grave Land, and then Grave Land 2, we tried to analyze it. We looked at the mood. That's it. I remember I gave you a question. We looked at the mood, and then we looked at how to answer a question of that nature. And then we came to the last and the amazing one. Also, with the Grave Land, we discussed the theme of slavery in the poem. And we came to the last one which is The Black Woman by Leopold Sedasenkov. And this one, after reading, I opened it up for the learners, and the learners have analyzed it beautifully. Um, if you were paying close attention, you realize that the learners picked it line by line, and they gave us their perspective, what they think about it. I remember one of the learners, Moses, calling from the north and he analyzed the last two lines and he said before jealous fate turn you to ashes to feed the roots of life and he said that before the western cultures culture consumes the beauty that is hidden in africa that was so beautiful and um, we also got some of the learners um so i looked at let's talk about the issues raised in the poem and some of the issues that was raised in the poem, projecting Africa in a beautiful way. We also saw that the love for his roots, the persona was talking about his love for his roots. We also saw the persona portray Africa as a place of rest. And then finally, he portrayed Africa as life. We also saw one of the learners giving us another theme so the theme of longing for love, the theme of beauty, oh, the theme of pride, the persona having pride in his roots. Okay, 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 okay. All too soon. We have to.
to end the lesson. Don't worry. I'll come your way once again, and I'm going to share all that we have learned. We are going to revise it. Okay, let's pick our last caller. Hello, Victoria. Hello, Victoria. Okay, hello, Victoria. It's Ophelia. Ophelia, hello, Ophelia. Share with us. Good evening. Good evening. Why are you calling from? I'm calling from. I'm calling from both. Oh, cool. Okay, oh. okay, okay. Let's go on. Share with us what yes. you've learned. Please, I'm now from Sydney class. Is that? Share with us what you have learned. So much. Oh, yes. And I'm going to. Okay, Victoria. Um, we cannot hear you well. I said, oh, oh, what you have learned. No, what, what you have learned, your takeaway for today. I don't get you. Okay. All right, Victoria. Victoria, are you in secondary school? No. Okay. Uh huh. So, Victoria, what we are learning this evening um, is part of the selected text for senior high school, okay? Okay. All right. So, the, the, your teacher will also come and take you through, right? Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, we also saw the, the persona, that is a voice in the poem, projecting um, the landscape and the vegetation of Africa. And he did that through the use of his beautiful words. Okay. And so, I'm ending the lesson. But I'm not ending without Jumez line. And what are Jumez lines for today? Jumez lines for today says that the driving force to your seat is believing that nobody can do it better than you. To my learners who called this evening, you have exhibited and shown the whole country and whoever is listening to us that you've got the power to bring about the change. The teacher is no more that sage on stage to give you everything. You have the power to also bring your own understanding to book. Once you have the examples to back it, the examples to support it. Believe me, you can do it. You can achieve it. You are possible. Okay? Keep working hard. So we meet again. It's been Senior High School Art Revision Show here on Joy Learning. Stay blessed and have a good night. Bye-bye.